Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 5. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 23 of Book 5. Now in this proposition, we have perturbed ratios. In other words, a to b is equal to e to f, and b to c is equal to d to e. And if we have this perturbed ratio, this proposition states that a to c would be equal to d to f. So let's prove this. Again, starting with our perturbed ratios, the ratio of a to b is equal to the ratio of e to f, ratio of b to c is equal to the ratio of d to e. Now we're going to start by taking three lines that are equal multiples of a, b, and d. Now you'll notice this is the first time that we've taken three equal multiples. So it's important to bear in mind that this is not the same as what we did for Proposition 22. So again, we have g, h, and k, which are equal multiples of a, b, and d. We take another set of three equal multiples, l, m, and n, so that they are equal multiples of c, e, and f. Now, a, b, is going to be equal to the ratio of g h according to proposition 15, which is basically that if you have a ratio a to b, then you have equal multiples of a and b, the ratio of those two, in other words g and h, will be the same. So a b, the ratio of a to b, is equal to the ratio of g to h according to proposition 15. Similarly, the ratio of e to f is going to be equal to the ratio of m to n, for exactly the same reasons. You have a to b is equal to e to f, but a b is equal to g h, and e f is equal to m n. So if we put in the appropriate substitutions, in other words, substitute a b with g h, and substitute e f with m n, we end up with that the ratio of g to h is equal to the ratio of m to n. So g to h is equal to the ratio of m to n. Now we have b to c is equal to d to e. And if we take the inverse, so it's like cross multiplication if you're thinking of fractions, we have if b to c is equal to d to e, then substituting the d and the c, we have that the ratio of b to d is also equal to the ratio of c to e, and that's proposition 16. Now b to d is equal to h to k, because h and k are equal multiples of d, b and d respectively. Again, proposition 15. b to d is equal to c to e, b to d is equal to h to k, so therefore c to e is equal to h to k. So we have this relationship between these two ratios. Now c, the ratio of c to e, is equal to the ratio of l to m, again because l and m are simply equal multiples of c and e, proposition 15. So we have h to k is equal to c to e, c to e is equal to l to m, so therefore h to k is equal to l to m, proposition 11. So if h to k is equal to l to m, again we're going to take what we learned in high school is the cross product. h to k equal l to m also means that the ratio of h to l is equal to the ratio of k to m. Just swapping these two numbers here. That's proposition 16. So we have g to h, the ratio of g to h is equal to the ratio of m to n, and the ratio of h to l is equal to k to m. So we have g to h is equal to m to n, h to l is equal to k to m. This is a perturbed ratio. So according to Proposition 21, if we have this perturbed ratio, then if g is greater than l, k would be greater than n. If g was equal to l, k would be equal to n. If g was less than l, k would be less than n this relationship right here. Well, g is equal to m of a, 
L is equal to N times C, K is equal to M times D, and N is equal to N times F. And this relationship here is the definition for the equality of two ratios between A to C and D to F. Remember, this statement right here is the definition of two ratios being equal. So this says that the ratio of A to C is equal to the ratio of D to F. So in conclusion, we started off with this perturbed ratio, and we have demonstrated if these equalities hold true, then the ratio of A to C will also be equal to the ratio of D to F. And that concludes this video presentation. To see the next presentation, just click the next button.